after the Resident Evil 2 remake a year ago impressed everyone with just how well an old game can be brought into the modern era with lots of money and the willingness to ignore the complaints of diehard fans of the original, people began turning their attention toward the idea of a remake of Resident Evil 3. Except for me, as I was quick to remind everyone that Resident Evil 3 was nothing but a quick cash grab spin-off of Resident Evil 2 that was never originally supposed to be Resident Evil 3, made with reused assets and gameplay, along with a story that served no real purpose in moving the series forward. Well now the Resident Evil 3 remake is here, and it turns out Pass is definitely prologue, because every point I mentioned about the original holds true for the remake, except I failed to predict they would cut out around a third of the content from the original game, and remove almost all of the puzzles. So now you can beat the game in about 4 hours as long as you possess two hands to keep on the controller and you turn your monitor on. Those with only one hand and a broken monitor can expect an extra 30 minutes of playtime. This pandemic has spread faster than any disease in modern history. Well, this is some uncomfortably timed live action footage, isn't it? However, these news reports on the zombie outbreak in Raccoon City fly in the face of the fact that the event was covered up during the outbreak. Leon and Claire didn't know what they were driving into at the start of Resident Evil 2, and Jill begins this game oblivious to a zombie outbreak occurring despite the news broadcast about it. Also, there is something about using live action footage instead of CG here that screams low budget to me more than artistic license. If you are going to open with a dream sequence where the main character kills himself, the least you can do is not make it so obvious. The first person perspective and muted color scheme is kind of a dead giveaway. Either that or I'm playing Resident Evil 7 again. Later on in this game, Jill is infected with the virus, so Capcom tried to play around with that idea by giving Jill a little of the old PTSD from her time in the Arkley Mansion. However, her PTSD doesn't go any further than this nightmare, and doesn't even resurface when she starts fighting zombies and running from Nemesis in just a few minutes. Three more days. Then I can kiss this town goodbye. For someone who's moving out of town in just three days, Jill has done very little packing. Jill left her faucet running in her dream, but as it turns out, she left it running in reality too. Listen, you gotta get out of there! What are you talking about? I don't have time to explain! You gotta get out of there right now! I have to assume Brad has already been attacked by Nemesis and that's why he's calling Jill to warn her. For some reason, Nemesis decided to leave Brad alone after initially attacking him and target Jill exclusively. This was handled more realistically in the original game, where Nemesis finished off Brad first before focusing on Jill. Let me grab my- ah! Did Nemesis pick the wrong apartment? Is that why he needed to punch through the wall to get to Jill instead of coming in through her front door? Nemesis likes to take the pro wrestling approach to making attacks look dangerous. If you pay any attention, you realize he's actually pretty bad at killing his target. There's nothing stopping him from breaking Jill's neck right now except for his desire to throw her to the floor for no reason and look at her. Was Jill's apartment building on fire before Nemesis showed up? Shouldn't the fire alarm have triggered a while ago? That guy on the fire escape fell from the second floor and splats on the ground dead. Remember that for later when Jill drives a car off a parking garage and survives. Somehow, Jill missed the complete breakdown of society as the city was consumed in a viral outbreak. None of the explosions, rioting, sirens, news reports, or even fellow officers contacting her clued her in that things were bad. And Jill has been investigating Umbrella on her own time after being fired from stars. You would think she would be the one to spot the early warning signs. Brad didn't survive long in the original game, so it's fair that he doesn't live long in the remake. But at least his death served a purpose in the original by introducing Nemesis. In the remake, he gets bitten and turns into a zombie off screen. Jill finds a gun on a dead officer, then the camera pans to show an approaching zombie. When it pans back to Jill, she is now wearing a complex weapon holster and utility belt that was nowhere to be seen on the dead police officer. I suppose you could chalk it up to sheer coincidence that the car Jill gets into to ram Nemesis off the parking garage is the exact same car Jack had in his garage in Resident Evil 7, but let's be honest, it's just a reused asset. I would have forgiven this had we been allowed to drive the car into Nemesis ourselves like we did with Jack, but here it's only a cutscene. Also, this car was nowhere to be seen on the parking garage roof prior to the cutscene. A six-story fall off a building inside of a car while not wearing a seatbelt has pretty low survivability odds. At the very least, that's an impacted spine. This also happened to Jack right after being hit with a car in Resident Evil 7. Which game are you trying to remake at this point, Capcom? This is the only Resident Evil game where rocket launchers are not one-shot kills on main villains. My guys have converted some subway cars into a shelter. It's safe. Carlos and his team have set up a shelter in the subway to get survivors out of the city. During an event like this, a subway would be packed with people trying to get away. Not something you would find abandoned that you could have all to yourself. I am UBCS, platoon leader Mikhail Victor. Mikhail and Victor are two first names. That's something the remake could have fixed pretty easily with a throwaway line about code names or something, but left it unchanged. My team was sent here to rescue civilians. You were sent in to rescue civilians with high-powered weaponry and with no means of officially moving civilians out of the city. If we can get the subway train moving, we can evacuate some survivors. Subways are for intercity travel. It wouldn't take you outside of the city limits. At best, you are just moving survivors around the city. But we need help. My men cannot do this alone. 
But you? You can do this alone. My men? No way. We're only mercenaries trained for this exact situation by Umbrella. Here you go. We can use this to stay in contact. I know what a radio is. Carlos is just trying to be helpful. Why do so many writers think this is the way to write a strong female character? Making a person act in a completely unlikable manner in the face of basic courtesy is what you do when you want the player to associate that person with being full of themselves. Jill doesn't bother telling the survivors that she sees on the street that there is safety in the subway, which undermines her desire to help the remaining survivors escape. This makes three Resident Evil games in a row now where Capcom has made use of that bolt cutter animation. All right, I'm not under threat. No, 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 wait, please! No! I wonder so many of you dead. And what are you, UBCS, killing your own people? He would have turned. There's your sense of self-preservation. Nikolai is a secondary villain in Resident Evil 3, which always struck me as being unnecessary, seeing as you have all you need in a villain with Nemesis. It's right there in his name even. Nikolai doesn't even have a goal that makes him interesting. He's only here for data collection. He's about as intimidating as a district manager inspection with a stereotyped Russian accent. This is day one of the outbreak, yet this hive of insects has already grown over the power station. Jill needs to get the power back on for the subway to work. Every building in this neighborhood I've been in had working power, including Jill's apartment. Did the power company shut down only the power going to the subway during a time of crisis? A lot of people spent an unhealthy amount of time arguing over the changes in Jill's outfit and appearance, either for or against it. I'm personally not invested in that discussion. But regardless, the miniskirt and tube top was relegated to bonus costume, and Jill tells Carlos off every time he tries to flirt with her. That takes care of one half of the Twitter audience, I suppose. To make up for the loss of the miniskirt and its fans, Capcom had Jill deep throat a bug and give birth to its maggots, allows her to be eaten whole by two different monster types, and offers a healthy dose of shots focused on Jill's ass. Is everyone happy now? Resident Evil 3 has become the demilitarized zone between moral nags and deviant perverts all because of 90s fashion tastes. That's the third game in a row where the unstoppable monster has busted through a wall in front of you. The only memorable thing about Resident Evil 3 was Nemesis. He would show up randomly and be a real pain in the ass throughout the game, so I figured the remake would at least nail that part. Unfortunately, no. Nemesis only shows up in a non-scripted way for this one section of the game, probably because several areas from the original game were cut. And to be perfectly honest, he's all hype with little substance. Nemesis was far more effective than Mr. X in the original game, and that was because Nemesis was the completion of the idea the devs had for Mr. X in Resident Evil 2, but couldn't accomplish due to time. But Resident Evil 2 achieved that goal in the remake, and now Nemesis is just a sad imitation with nothing to add to the experience. I think I counted all of two puzzles in Resident Evil 3, this subway line puzzle being one of the two. Both are incredibly simple and you are done with them in minutes. I recall there being a fair amount of puzzles in the original, and some of them pretty difficult. I suppose this is what we deserve after making fun of how ridiculous the concept of complex locking mechanisms found throughout mansions and police stations was. Well this time they listened, and now the combat has nothing to break up the pacing. Why is she here? Nikolai is the one who told Jill to head back to the station after shooting one of his own men. Strangely, Jill never mentions Nikolai shooting that guy to the other Umbrella Mercs, who would probably have something to say about that. She's helping get the trains running again. Bad time to start getting dead weight for you have a train full of civilians and Nikolai is calling Jill dead weight. Once again, Nemesis had Jill there for the taking, but throws her to the side. I suppose if you go to all the trouble of grabbing a flamethrower, you want to make sure you get to use it. Jill is falling off a lot of buildings in this game, and coming through without a scratch both times. The only other character depicted being this resilient to damage is Nemesis, and it's a bioweapon. This area is right outside of Raccoon Police Station from Resident Evil 2. This fire truck's ladder was not extended like this in that game. Kendo gets a cameo from Resident Evil 2. He does nothing of importance except give Jill a key to a locked alleyway next to his store, a problem which could have been solved by not adding a locked gate solely for adding a lame cameo. This character, who was killed at the beginning of their original Resident Evil 2, has been given a lot of extra miles. First an expanded role in Resident Evil 2, then a DLC campaign, and now this. Given the series history, when it comes to rocket launchers, Jill should be very dead right now. Carlos, I know we didn't get off to a great start, but thanks for the save. That was entirely due to Jill acting irrational. She met Carlos when he saved her life from Nemesis. After finding out he worked for Umbrella, which he openly admitted to minutes after meeting her, she kept him at arm's length until he saved her life again from Nemesis. I'd be interested to know how Nemesis caught up with a subway train. He hasn't exactly been shown to possess a lot of speed. Nemesis is really good at killing everyone except Jill. While the game explains how Marvin was infected, it doesn't bother explaining why Carlos and Tyrell never encounter him in the police station. All of the doors in the lobby are locked except for the one Tyrell opens, and Carlos raids the lockers for explosives. So I guess Marvin restocks those later even though the keypad is missing two buttons. Dr. Bard! Oh, thank God. Do you know how long I've been trying to reach somebody? Don't worry, we're gonna get you out of there. Just tell me where you are. I'm trapped in a goddamn hospital, surrounded by every kind of abomination. 
Carlos is here looking for Dr. Bard since he was working on a vaccine for the virus. Supposedly, he's here in the police station inside the star's office, which makes no sense because he's been at the hospital the entire time and even sent his police for help from there. This game expects me to believe people were capable of getting live webcam streaming over the internet at decent quality in 1998, during a zombie outbreak no less. Umbrella's gone crazy, they're killing all the researchers! I am the only one who knows how to make the vaccine to stop the zombies! Creating vaccines is pretty well understood in medical science. I think Dr. Bard is overstating his usefulness. If you are thrown from a derailed subway train, then by all accounts you should be dead. Are we certain Jill is in a nemesis? Because she is just as durable. This is a good moment to point out that the grenade launcher Jill is using didn't exist until 2014, while this game takes place in 1998. Also, the name of the grenade launcher is MGL Grenade Launcher. The MGL stands for Multiple Grenade Launcher, so its full name is Multiple Grenade Launcher Grenade Launcher. Brilliant as always, Capcom. The T-Virus is also a potent tranquilizer given how fast it puts Jill down after Nemesis infects her with it. Interest. You've done me a big favor, miss. Since Nikolai has a secret mission to accomplish in Raccoon City, that being gathering data and hurting Umbrella if he can, what was his plan back when he was on the subway train out of the city? Had Nemesis not derailed it, he would have left without accomplishing his mission. Half a day goes by before Carlos finds Jill. Weirdly, during all that time, Nemesis left Jill alone despite her being completely defenseless. The fact that the hospital is in such good condition in this situation defies belief. Goddamn Nathaniel Bard! I'm the best biologist you'll ever meet, you bedpan-changing waste of a nursing degree. Carlos gets into Dr. Bard's office by using a secretly recorded cassette tape from one of the employees which has an odd Me Too angle to it. Nikolai just crawled in through a window earlier and shot Dr. Bard in the head. Why do the bad guys always get to be so practical? My employer, the Umbrella Corporation, engineered this virus. And they ordered my team to develop a vaccine, which we did. So Umbrella created the virus, then built this lab under the hospital to create a vaccine for the virus in case the virus got out and started spreading. Then when the virus started spreading, Umbrella didn't make use of the vaccine they made and intends to destroy it and everyone who knows about it to keep things under wraps. How was Umbrella ever planning to make a profit off of this virus if they couldn't use it or cure it without exposing themselves? If your vaccine is glowing purple, maybe anti-vaxxers are onto something. That isn't normal. No one in video games ever looks for a vein when performing an injection. The contagion spreading throughout the city has been designated uncontainable. On October 1st, Raccoon City will be completely destroyed in a missile strike. All residents capable of rational thought are urged to evacuate immediately. I don't think the government would encourage people inside the zombie-infested city to run before the bomb drops. If you're at the stage of nuking one of your own cities, you must have already accepted the fact that nearly everyone in it is dead or a zombie. The whole point is to eradicate the city and everyone inside it to stop the spread. I'm gonna try to lower the window shutters. The less entry points, the better. And how do we do that? I'll try hacking into the hospital security system. I've never seen a hospital with security window shutters. Is Raccoon City known for its hospital raids? And if they did, they wouldn't have them on windows that high off the ground, nor would they close at a snail's pace like these do. This is yet another instance of the cabin defense scene that first appeared in Resident Evil 4, and in almost every Resident Evil game since in a lesser implementation. Carlos set a previous bomb to go off in a mere 3 seconds back in the police station. Now when time is of the essence, he gives it a healthy 30 second window. You going somewhere? You're damn right. What do you think you're gonna do? Whole city's about to be microwaved. Come on, man. Call the government. Tell them we found a cure. You stall for time. Carlos heads to the underground lab to get more samples of the vaccine to stop the government from nuking the city. How he gets down there is a mystery, since the only door leading to it is still locked when Jill heads down there after him. Somehow Jill had a dream about waking up in the very hospital room she's in. She's been unconscious since yesterday. She didn't even know where she was after waking up, so how would she accurately dream about the room she was in? How is it no one in the hospital ever noticed all this? Jill is asking the question I would normally be asking. I must admit, I respect your tenacity, but I'm afraid our games end here. Nikolai set up a pretty lame trap, turning off an elevator in a room with a few zombies in it and that's it. This is the same man who has watched Jill take on Nemesis multiple times and come out on top. He'll call off the strike if, and this is one big ass if, we can deliver the vaccine to them before they launch. <sighs> How long do we have? Hours. Try minutes. Nemesis could have impelled Jill with that tentacle just now, but chose to kill Tyrell instead. Once again, Nemesis is good at killing everyone but his target. USB flash drives weren't invented until 1999, and the first USB stick wasn't available until 2000 and had a whopping 8 megabytes. This being 1998, Umbrella shouldn't have this or find it very useful given the size limit. Am I the only one who thinks the vaccine vial looks like a sex toy due to the coloring? The vial looks completely different after Jill pockets it. But I'm in this business to get paid. So let's make a deal. You go down there, battle the nemesis, and I'll record it all and sell the combat dot. 
put on a good show and maybe I don't need the vaccine. Nikolai knows that the city is only minutes away from being nuked, but decides recording a film of Jill fighting the nemesis is something he has time for, even though he's recorded her fighting nemesis multiple times already. Carlos has been down here for almost an entire day and never found the vaccine that Jill found in minutes. If Nemesis can survive this, it can survive what eventually kills it. This is the last fucking time. Here's another example of the good old wall of meat final boss fight in a Resident Evil game cliche. Not content with developing zombie viruses, Umbrella was apparently developing rail guns in their spare time. This is the kind of gun I would expect Doom Guy to use. It's taller than Jill and very likely weighs more than her. And no way can you use a rail gun handheld either. The recoil alone would kill her. Just look what it does to the ground she's standing on. Next time, take the fucking hit! Capcom needs to do better than writing zingers for action females that reference dating. So Nikolai beat Carlos unconscious, left him alive and hid somewhere out of sight until Jill showed up just so he could ambush her when he could have just gotten in the helicopter that's right there and flown away. Promise to this, didn't I? No! Do you have any idea what you've just done? Oh no, don't care. For a character whose only motivation is money, destroying the vaccine which would be worth serious money is very out of character. Even the writers don't seem to know why he did that. Nikolai could have at least killed Carlos before Jill showed up. He's gone on about self-preservation in every scene he's been in. Now look at where he finds himself. Uh, Jill! Uh, shoot him! Uh, I can't! Uh, I'll hit you! Do it! One major thing this game cut out was decision making. The original game had moments where Jill would have to make split decisions which would affect the story and lead to different endings. All of that was cut and you can only get the canon ending. There it is. And now Jill is blind after staring directly at a nuclear detonation. You were almost a Jill sandwich.